what did you make of that whole experience? You know, we were talking about in the build-up, the feeling of walking out, UFC debut in London, packed out crowd, your friend Tom on the main event bill. What did you make of the whole experience? Oh, it was amazing. Um, I didn't feel overwhelmed. It felt like I belonged there, if that makes sense. But uh, what I know was amazing. Everybody cheering for us. Like, look, I took it all in. Uh, everybody this week's told us, like, take it in and enjoy it. It's easy to let it pass you by. And it just become like a memory. But I felt like I took it in, I enjoyed it, and it felt good. Like Bruce Buffer calling me in, I just enjoyed every moment. Uh, I haven't watched the fight back yet, so I'll have to watch it back before I talk about that too much. But I feel like I definitely could have done a little better. Yeah, like you mentioned, you look really comfortable in there. And there was never a moment that you looked in trouble. And, you know, towards the end of the third round, you were exchanging like going toe-to-toe -to -toe towards the end of it. Did you feel like you'd have embraced that a bit more early in the fight, or did you just want to warm up in there, get your confidence up, and just uh, breeze through it? Because that's what it looked like, you were just breezing through it in there. It's heavyweight MMA, so I don't take too many big shots early. I feel like I'm a lot fitter than most heavyweights, so I'm getting out the first round is probably key to me winning a lot of times. Um, I felt he did slow down, but I didn't, but I didn't do enough to... Finish him really. I think uh, my coach was saying they were tight, so I knew it was tight going to third. He was like, just think, he's like, I'm not too sure, just think you might be one, two, then it's really tight. And then I heard like 90 seconds left, and then like the last 30, I thought, oh, make a little statement. I felt like I didn't feel like any of these shots hurt. He was obviously big, and like a few I tickled, but they weren't nice, but none hurt us. Um, now I felt good. I thought he'd try and wrestle more, potentially kick more. I feel like I would have finished him with the leg kicks, but obviously he was switched on to switch stance. Um, I think I heard his front leg as well. I think I took a lot away of his movement. I heard his coach shouting for like a blast double. I knew he had a good blast double, but I, I knew he was a fast guy, but to be honest, I, I felt faster than him in there. I felt like good. I did. We spoke about this before the fight as well. You know, the rise that Tom's had, you'll be looking for a similar rise and you'll be wanting to bring the UFC back to the Northeast because we mentioned 2008, 2009, that was the last time they had an event over there. Is that well within your plans now within the next two to three years? Oh, that would be amazing for it to come to the North East. Um, a few of our guys from our gym and a few of the North East are getting on the Contender Series now. They're um, pushing the look for the UFC. So I feel like next year or two, there'll be loads more guys from the North East in the UFC. Uh, my gym, a few guys are like pushing on for it themselves. Uh, so give it a couple of years, there might be a few North East stars and then potentially it could come up there. But... As long as it's in the UK, that's the main thing. Just get some UK cards so I can fight in front of this again. And I was speaking to Phil DeFries as well. You know, you guys, you, Phil and Tom, have had an amazing camp together. Two out of three so far. And with Tom looking to do the business later on tonight as well. Do you feel like that is the best heavyweight MMA gym in the world that you guys have got together right now? I think it is. Um, I haven't been too far many gyms. Uh, I've only been a couple, but Phil's travelled the world now, sparring everywhere. And he says, like, to get two good heavyweights is crazy, never mind three or the six. So it's amazing. I'm just training up home uh, with Phil, my coach Fisher, just keep getting better. I can dip in there and spar off the guys and use the bodies there. And I feel like we're all just bringing each other on. And I felt off sparring with Tom, I was used to the speed of what Jamal would bring. It wasn't as fast as Tom. And I'd do okay with Tom. Like, I'm used to that speed, so it didn't, like, scare us off early. And then I think... Wrestling with Phil, the no one near as strong as him. He's crazy strong. So when they grip all of us, I'm like, oh, they're going to be like Phil, and they just never are. And, and Phil can't even keep us down. So I feel like no one in the UFC can. And, and final one: Is there a name in particular that you're eyeing up for your next fight, or is it just anyone the UFC gives you? You'll sign on the dotted line and continue to stack the wins up. Just let the UFC match. As I feel, calling people out this early is just not right. I think. Top 15, that's when you start calling guys out and they're looking in advance. I'm here, just fight anybody really at this. They're all going to be similar. One, two fights in the UFC, contender series. They'll all be fair matchups. I think I'm just ready for anybody. Well done on the win, mate. Thank you. Hey, Mick, go just over here. Um, it seemed like yourself and Jamal were chatting to each other uh, in the cage. What were you saying to him? Oh, I enjoyed the chatting. I've never done that before. Um, he was just, I got to hear him talking to his coach. He was like, yes, sir, and listening to them. And then a few times I was kicking them and hurting them, and he was like, all right, and then he checked one half, and he was like, my coach was shouting, ah, it's hurting him, and he went, I checked that. So I was talking to him, and I hit him with a big right hand, I think I said something like, didn't like that, did you? 
and kicked him. I knew his leg was like compromised, but he switched stances quite well and like hit it. I felt like if he stopped orthodox, I'd have finished him. So ah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Your friend Jake Smith sent me a Facebook post from a pub called The Terrace, who uh, <laughs> named a, a burger after you tonight. Uh, how do you react to that? The support's been crazy from Sunderland. You know, it's like it's only a small place, and like I forget how many people like how cool this is for people. Um, I'm just here fighting, you know. I've just wanted to do it, but people absolutely love it. So an old place I used to work, that put the fight on, they did loads of like meal deals for it, and they made like a giant burger that I'll have to try next week when I get home, but it looked good. Am I right in saying that you worked there as a doorman? Yeah, I worked there as a doorman for a little while before I uh, packed it in, but uh, it was a great bar, and yeah, a few bars from Sunderland, they're all were sharing it, seeing um, from five o'clock onwards with the UFC, uh, Sunderland's own. I, I feel like I've got crazy support, you know, I sometimes forget like how many people actually want us to do well, it was crazy, like, I haven't even looked at my phone yet, but it'll be going mental, I'll have to try and reply to everybody if I can. Last one for me, obviously it's the first time you've seen past a second round in your career and also obviously the, the first time going to a decision. Going from a UK regional show to the UFC, was there any, you know, any nerves there or like how do you reflect on, on the fact that you went to a decision? Was there any disappointment that you didn't get the finish? Um, I didn't feel that nervous. Uh, I know it's crazy like this big show but it felt good. I, even in the cage it felt like, obviously I wouldn't say like sparring but I felt a lot relaxed while some fights you don't know what's going on, you just think, like, you're just reacting. But I felt in there, I was picking me shots, I was thinking about what I was doing. I definitely think, I haven't watched it back yet, but I definitely think there might have been a finish there. I hit him with a big shot, then he would, I would maybe look for the second shot, then he would counter. When I counted, I felt like I could have finished him, but then he stopped leading. I just need to work on a few things when they do cover up, because I'm beating them, striking. They're going to probably look the wrestlers, and I need to draw out their counters. So there's a few things to work on, but I'll watch it back. But I'm actually happy to do three rounds as well, because I'm always in my head. People are thinking, like, oh, what happens if I'm knackered in the third round? Uh, what happens if I'm so tired? But I, I felt good in there. You know, I definitely could have pushed it a little harder to get the three rounds out. I feel like I am fit at the most heavyweights. So I just need to remember that. Thank you. I just don't know, um, a few days ago, I was in Canary Wharf and I got to witness Phil De Vries catching a live pigeon <laughs> with his hands. How important is that fight week camaraderie for you to be able to kind of just chill out and not take things too seriously? Not seriously, but to be able to unwind a bit. It's amazing. Um, having Phil around, he's hilarious. He just does crazy stuff like that all the time. He could have his own show and you would follow you about. And honestly, me and my coach love widening him up. He does not take a joke well either. But he's a great guy, you know. And like, look, look at his reactions to catch a pigeon. That's... He moved like a lightweight to catch that pigeon. We're pushing for him his next fight to release doves before he fights. Yeah, that's, that's clear. <laughs> Fair play. Congratulations. Bro. Thank you, man. Congratulations, Mick, tonight. Fantastic performance. Uh, your debut as well. Did your training camp differ, knowing that you're in this big occasion at the London O2? Uh, but I wouldn't say it differed too much. I always train pretty hard. The only thing that happens different is I spar a little harder. I'm always there twice, um, twice a day, every day, trying to get a little better. I've got Big Phil, who we mentioned, the pigeon catcher. <laughs> he like trains at my gym all the time, so I've got Phil like five days a week, six days a week. Then in sparring, we'll go and help Tom, or if he's got a fight, we'll go help him. Uh, just as loads of heavy guys, they're not big guys. We've got a couple of our players, maybe four, but it's good to have like a few. So we can just dip in and out. I feel like we're helping each other get better. Um, my coach up here has got a few different things that I try and help them out with them, show me a few nice things. I just feel like as long as I keep getting better, the sky's the limit. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you say that, you know, you're on your own in the cage. But you keep saying we and your team and your fans, you're constantly talking about other people. And Tom, how much of an inspiration is Tom and the fans around you spurring you on in that, in that cage? Oh, Tom's amazing, you know, he's, um, he's just, well, he doesn't know how good he is. But, like, to spar with him, to get rounds in and, like, start doing a little bit better with him every time. Like, as Paul's going on the first time and just, like, well, he's so fast and then, like, clicking onto it, like, getting my own stuff off and then doing a little better every now and then. Uh, it's been amazing, but... Um, the fans was crazy, that was amazing, but um, I keep going back to Phil, but my coach Andrew Fisher as well, without them two I wouldn't be here. Love that, and also last one for me, your composure is like second to none, because even now you seem so composed and relaxed. What's your advice on us to keep this composed? Oh, I, I, I don't know, a few things helped, um, my coach kept saying, you get into fighting because you enjoy it, and people start struggling when they put the pressure on themselves. I, 
I've always thought like, oh, you're half all right at this, just say how far you can take it. So I just take it one fight at a time. Like, uh, nobody knows how good I am, so I'll just keep pushing on. If I keep getting better, I feel like I can go all the way. And just a few years back, maybe I'd like, belief would never think like, oh, you could fight in the UFC. And like, if you saw us when I was 14, 15, like I was not athletic one bit, didn't even like sports. To come here would be crazy to tell us. And now I'm like beating people in the UFC and like training with people who was in the top five in the UFC. It's surreal. I love that. I love that sport has changed your life and now you deserve that burger next week. So Thank enjoy you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Done.